Hello, hello, hello. This is Evan Bourne, and you're listening to another wrestling podcast. It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast with your hosts, Steve Credo and Jonathan Benjamin. Welcome to episode 20 of another wrestling podcast. Wow. Jonathan, can you believe it's 20 episodes? Oh my god, it feels like just yesterday we started this. Um, and by my calculations, uh, this is the the 20th anniversary, so you're supposed to have bought me some china. Not not, not Joni Lore, but uh, some, some china or something platinum so i hope you came prepared can you believe this guy 20 episodes in and he wants me to buy him china because come on now but anyway guys thanks for tuning in uh we do this each and every week jonathan for free can you believe that we're doing it for free uh be sure to hop on itunes stitcher we're on there download us subscribe to us like us poke us friend us whatever you want um we're on social media we're all over the place another wrestling podcast.com for all your listening pleasure uh but guys one big place we want you to head is head on over to pro wrestling tees.com slash another wrestling podcast pick up a shirt you can pick up another wrestling t-shirt because jonathan what better way to listen to podcasts than with your own another wrestling podcast t-shirt yeah, I don't want you listening to this uh, in the nude. That's really not what we were trying to do with this podcast. So please go on Pro Wrestling Tees, pick up one of our shirts, and clothe yourself, for God's sakes. That's right, guys. Because, hey, if you support us, we support you. And if we support you, we support you. Uh, well, either way, you know, you get the point. So, guys, head on over there, ProWrestlingTees.com slash another wrestling podcast. You'll find two of our shirts. Two more are on the way. And, hey, be one of the first 25 people to buy them. We'll send you guys a little uh, a little package, a little surprise for, uh, hey, supporting us, right? Absolutely. Um, and like you were saying, the more support that you get, the better shows we can put on, the bigger the names, the more giveaways. Uh, so just, you know, keep keep supporting us and we will keep supporting you. There you go. Uh, so speaking of episode 20, what are we doing for episode 20, Jonathan? Oh, Arthur? buddy, you have no idea. I took care of everything. Everything? You got guests. You got guests for the 20th show? Oh, I got I got multiple guests for our twentieth show. Wow. Well, uh, let me hear it. Who who who's gonna be on the show? Well, um, Mike Roch is gonna be on the show. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't. Well, we're not a family show, but you're you're what? Mike Roch is gonna be on the show. Mike Roch. You're what? Mike Roch is going to be hmm. on the show. Mike Roch. Mike. Who's Mike Roch again? Oh my God. Mike Roch is the founder of Interspecies Wrestling. We have Mike Roch, Dan Barry, and Bill Carr on the show today. Wow, wow. L- leave it to you to book the 20th anniversary show, even though it's the 20th episode anniversary show. Uh, wow, with, uh, with surprises. Now, Interspecies Wrestling. I Googled them. I found them. I've never been to a show, Jonathan. What, what, what am I expecting? What can I expect? Because this Saturday we're headed to uh, – uh, what are we headed to? We're heading to Slamtasia 5. It is basically Interspecies Wrestling's WrestleMania, if you will. Um, Interspecies Wrestling is something that I kind of stumbled upon. I am living out of Connecticut, and they are somewhat of a local promotion. They run a couple shows a year out of Danbury, Connecticut. They are absolutely everything you think about professional wrestling, Um but in an alternate universe. Alternate universe wrestling. Uh, give me give me a little bit more about this because this is my first show. I have no idea what I'm walking into. I heard lots of great things. Uh, and I hear it's a little bit crazy at times. Tell me it's... tell me as a first as a noob as a as a you know a fresh face to interspecies. What what am I walking into, Jonathan? You're gonna first walk into basically a dank, dark. Um, it's a. It's called the Heirloom Arts Theater. It's a. It's a wonderful venue, but it's just something different. It's almost like something you would go to, like to a concert. So you walk in. There's a ring set up. There are no seats. You're gonna stand the entire time, and you're gonna be standing literally inches from the ring. All right. 
The main event is a fans bring the your own Legos match. It's a death match. Oh man! <laughs> People are actually getting pile drived onto oh, Legos. That has to be worse than freaking thumbtacks, right there. Legos, jeez, man, that's that's genius, if I must yeah, say. I mean, if you're if you ever have stepped on a Lego, you know the pain <laughs> that is going to be associated with this main event. Oh. We have, I mentioned that Dan Barry and Bill Carr are going to be on. Dan Barry and Bill Carr are Team Tremendous, which is basically the equivalent of a buddy cop film, something along the lines of Lethal Weapon, and they're facing the Food Fighters. Now, huh? that probably so sounds... Okay, the Food Fighters. One of the Food Fighters is a giant crab, and the other <laughs> one is a chef. Shut up and take my money. Absolutely. Um, it's unlike anything that you've ever seen, and I I love these guys, and I really hope for nothing but the best for these for interspecies wrestling. So, go out, come to the show if you if you can. If not, they're selling DVDs. They have T-shirts. You know, do everything you can to keep this promotion afloat because I I promise you, Credo. After Saturday, your life. <laughs> and maybe other things will never be the same again. Wow, I can't we could bring our own Legos too, you said. Absolutely. Anything. That's awesome. Wow. What kind of show can you go to that you could bring your own Legos for somebody to fall and pretty much kill themselves on? So that 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 has me. You had me at hello, Jonathan. There we go. Yes. Perfect. So uh, tell me more about uh, who who are we talking to first tonight? So tonight I think our first guests will be none other than Bill Carr and Dan Barry. Bill Carr and Dan Barry. Bill Carr, I heard, has a tremendous, tremendous, not just team tremendous, but a tremendous resemblance to Danny Glover. Is that true? Um, I think we're going to have to ask him about that, but I, I do think that, you know, if you saw the two somewhere, that you would you would see what we're, what we're getting at. All right, perfect. Well, let's get right to it. Today we have none other than team tremendous Bill Carr and Dan Barry. Thank you for joining us today. Wait, this is in the sex hotline? <laughs> well, we do that after this, the just the, the podcast first, then the hotline. All right, I get a couple of minutes on them. I'm, I'm, I'm still, still going to leave them off. I don't care. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so oh. for, for anybody listening out there that may not be familiar with you guys, we're going to kind of start from the beginning. So, Dan and Bill, um, were you guys both fans of wrestling as kids? I think you have to be, don't you? I you I like, hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that either one of us can say that we weren't fans. I mean, it's pretty much, if we weren't fans before, we have to have been now uh, because of that. But, yeah, no, I was a fan since far back as I can remember. Yeah, same here. I think uh, my mother tell me that she... Didn't want to deal with me, so she just sat me in front of the television and put on wrestling, and I was hooked ever since then. <laughs> All right. Got, well, his, his mother's lack good. of love for him is what... Yes. Yeah, very, really <laughs> very good parenting. <laughs> lack of love brings you to pro wrestling. Hey, it's it's a start, right? Uh, now, guys, oh, yeah. how did you guys uh, get involved into pro wrestling? I mean, how did, uh, how did it come to be that one day you guys were, were saying to yourselves, I'm going to be a pro wrestler? I'll let you take this one first. I'm making tacos. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Um, well, I mean, going back to being a little kid, this is always a dream of mine and everything. So it's really always what I wanted to do in some way, shape, or form. Um, how I got started, I had met Tony DeVito when I was wrestling in high school. His son was on the same team as me, and he was at one of the practices, and I went up to him. This was like, I think right when Ring of Honor just started up. So I went up to him and like introduced myself and all that stuff, and <clears throat> okay, I hung out a few times. Uh, he ran a small wrestling school near my house that I would go visit from time to time. But I didn't really start training until after my, I think it was, yeah, I think it was right after high school. I think I started training. So it was summer of 2005. So yeah, that's, that's how I got into it. Danny, you been making tacos yet? <laughs> I'm, I'm still making tacos right now. I'm actually cutting open an avocado, uh, 
to have make some guacamole too. Yeah, we can we, we we can hear you because it's the loudest goddamn thing I think I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's chopping like look, a boss over there. Look, look, I am I am Emerald Lagasse. Okay, I need to get my fucking food in. I uh, I get home from work very late, so I I you know you guys are having this podcast very. During daddy's eating time, as it's always. <laughs> um, I started wrestling. I was. Uh, Go ahead, well, on to the next I, subject. What's that? Nothing. I was just interrupting you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so I was uh, just 17 years old, and, uh, you know, I'd always wanted to be a wrestler. Like, I told all my friends I was going to be a wrestler. You know, like, I did the stereotypical, like, wrestling in my living room type thing. And then uh, my. I found out that a wrestling school that was opening in like Hicksville and I found out like one of my ex-girlfriends actually was going to it and I was like that's weird and uh, I went in I signed up at 17 years old I had my mom sign for me because that's how that works and um, yeah I just started wrestling and uh, it was, uh, was groundbreaking because I was 130 pounds and it was pointless for me to try and wrestle because I couldn't actually physically move anybody uh, I'll ask both of you guys this how, um, as of 2014, how long have you both been wrestling? Uh, I've been wrestling, this was 14 years. I started in 2000. Jesus, what an old man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm an old man, but I mean, like, Bill, you, you have to hold your breath and tie your shoes. I really wouldn't start calling anybody old. But... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long have I been wrestling? Oh my god, I've been so boring. Uh, I think seven years. Seven? No, I don't even think it was that much. Probably like six or fourteen. I don't know. One or the other. <laughs> All right. Now, now, Bill, uh, your career took off, and you landed in FCW WWE's. Way to rub that in. <laughs> WWE's developmental <laughs> tour- territory. <laughs> Hey, Bill. Hey, Dan. Oh, cool. You're you. Bill, your career really took off, didn't it? <laughs> hey, we, have, we have questions for you, too. Don't we, worry. Yeah. We make you sound really good. We, Don't we worry, gotta, Dan. Yeah. We're going to do the back and forth, you know. Okay. But, but, All right. But, Bill, so, so you're... you're, 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 you're no, Dan, you, we heard you make one hell of a taco. Oh, well, yeah. I'm about, to, I'm about to make some guacamole, too, because that's a daddy roll. <laughs> that's the next question, but... Uh, but, but, but Bill, so you, your career took off. You landed in FCW. When you got there, did you have? Did they have any plans for you immediately, or is it was it still, you know, still new to WWE? Because you know, as it as it blossomed into NXT right now, I mean, was FCW working with WWE still kind of new down there, getting their getting the things in order? Oh, uh, when I when I got down there, I think FCW had been the development developmental system for I think. Two or three years at that point. Um, when I got down there, I had no idea what they wanted me to do. I actually, at one point, thought that they hired the wrong person. <laughs> I still had no idea what I was, why I was down there in the first place. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, it took a while. Not really a while. It took like a month or two before John Moore and I just called me and came up with an idea for me which was the whole Bobby Dutch thing, which he wanted me to be just like a big, loud, obnoxious Texan, mm-hmm. like, a, like, a, like a Bobby Duncan or Stan Hansen. Um, except not a good wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, yeah, so, so he told me, he was like, you got to cut your hair, dye it blonde, and we need to just switch the trucks. So I was... A little different for me. I had to do that all within like a five-hour period, which kind of sucked. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they—I—I I did that for the joy to my stay there. And like, I mean, they—they they pretty much they told me everything that I needed to do, which was very rare for them to do down there. So I, I guess that's why they hired me because they saw, you know, that I could portray it as a gimmick or whatever. And, um, yeah, so it was like toward the end of my run when they told me to switch up whatever I was doing and try to do something for myself, which is what I wanted to do because I had a bunch of stuff in mind. And then I think I got fired three days after they told me that. So I had no chance to shine 
I, I think that's what the kids say these days. <laughs> I don't know why they keep saying the word shine for no goddamn reason. <laughs> so, well, here, man, my favorite word. Here's the big question. Now, Dan, your path, oh, hey. your path led you to many places as well. You were in New York Wrestling Connection, NYWC. Now, some, something people may not know about you is that you had a hand in training the likes of Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, and Trent Beretta. Um, and the Iron Sheik. And the Iron yes. Sheik. And the Iron Sheik. That's the, yeah. that's the one that everyone always forgets, I know. So, um, oh, yeah. How, how was your time in New York Wrestling Connection, and... Um, how did it come about that you you um, trained those guys? Well, I, that's where I started with MWC. MWC for a long time was uh, the indie in Hicksville, and uh, then it merged with Mike Murphy, who had a, um, a school called QWA at the time, um, which was stemmed from, I think, HWA, uh, or Alphabet Soup of Pro Wrestling. And, um, you know, the, the, the two... The companies merged, and then uh, after a while, it was like, I remember I remember the day that, like, uh, Brett, um, Zack Ryder came in. Him and, like, uh, Trent Beretta, like, joined at the same time around, not long after each other. Um, a lot of fun known facts is that uh, Zack Ryder had a, a backyard wrestling federation that was on uh, public access in Long Island. And uh, it was a, kind of a big rib among the pro wrestlers, uh, and then we would keep, like, watch it after Raw. And there it was, or right before, I should say. And there he was, uh, Brett Matthews, uh, in all of his glory with his uh, club shirt and his sunglasses and his, uh, his beaded stainless steel necklace type thing. Um, and uh, he came in, when he joined, he was 15 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, and he weighed about a buck 20, scrawny little kid. And they all sort of made their way into um, uh, MWC, and from there, I just sort of was a guest trainer. Like, I would be the guy, like, like Mikey would train, and then um, there'd be other people there who would help train them. But, like, I ended up coming in on, like, Sundays, and they were always there. And then uh, I ended up becoming, they gave me a key to school, and I ended up becoming one of the trainers. Uh, from there, it just kept uh, growing, I guess. Like, I kept, like, Brian, uh, uh, Brian Myers, Kurt Hawkins came in, and uh, he was another person that they just threw me with. Um, and then the MWC for like six months to sort of closed down. And then during that time, um, I took those guys to like uh, Ace, which is, was in uh, Jersey, um, and trained them on like Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, and came back. And I mean, it's not really all that fun of a story. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But um, it was a good time. Uh, I had a lot of fun working with those guys. I like the, the energy they all had. Uh, they were all fun. But... So I couldn't be more entertaining than the story. This is sort of pretty <laughs> much how I went. It was, they came to me and I helped train them out of necessity, not necessarily anything else. Well, I think it's just, it goes to show that you, I mean, these guys are on TV, but they had to get their start somewhere. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that it's people like you that actually had a hand. If, if it wasn't for people like you, maybe they wouldn't have made it. So that's why I was asking the question. Yeah, one of the things I think that, uh, you know, I, I never really take credit for their signing because they didn't get signed because of anything like I taught them, I don't believe. Um, I just think that, like, some of the crispness of the moves they do and uh, the way they carry themselves, I kind of sort of take some level of credit for, but, like, psychology and, and uh, you know, their successes, their successes are sort of all on them. All right, now, uh, guys, uh, Team Tremendous, how did you guys, you know, form Team Tremendous? And now, could we call this the second incarnation since it was Dan and Ken Scampi were the originals? Or well, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? Um, well, Team Tremendous uh, originally started back in, like, 2003 or 2004. Uh, Ken Scampi and I were the team, so to speak. Uh, and I don't even know if started wrestling yet at that point. Um and then, uh, I was just being bored, yeah. actually, because I'm a lot younger. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you are. You're much younger, uh, which probably was, explains why you're not quite... Yeah, it's also why you're not very good. But, what? <laughs> what? Who said that? So, anyway, so we started our little incarnation or whatever, and Peter is actually just a play on the concept, like, uh, I forget what happened, but somebody was talking about, uh, and it was a 100% true story, somebody saw 
Scampi's bulge, and they were like, oh my God, that's tremendous. <laughs> and then the same thing happened, uh, similar story happened with me, and I was like, oh my God, that's tremendous. And then uh, it just kind of kept going from there. And uh, next thing we knew, it was like, Mikey, Mikey Rippert was a member of Team Tremendous, Matt Stryker was a member of Team Tremendous. Uh, and then um, me and Scampi made the tag team out of it. Uh, Bill came into like FTW, it was a Long Island thread, uh, around like 2000, I want to say 2009, 2008, 2007, something. I think it was, I think it was 2010, I believe. Really? Yeah. Was I that... told you, I've, I've, been, I've, I've only been doing this for like six years. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I forget, whatever. Whatever. How, how old am I again? <laughs> my, I'm, I, I think I'm know. like 15. <laughs> Yeah, happy. Oh, you, you just turned 15, so happy 15th birthday, Bill Cox. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, we, had, we met Bill, and, and Bill was sort of like a fish out of water, and uh, he didn't know what to do. He was very uncomfortable with his own skin. So, we were like, well, this is our new best friend, and we decided to uh, take him along with us, or like make him like our buddy, because we didn't fit in there either. And um, Bill and we all started being like buddies and hanging out, and then Bill got signed. Uh, which he'll tell you about ad nauseum because that's what he loves to do. Well, I'm Bill. I guess fine. Whatever, Bill. Fuck you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that either. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, uh, uh, Beyond Wrestling has sort of made Team Tremendous a faction, and we're like, well, Bill Carr is our faction. 100% that's what I want, Bill Carr in our faction. And Bill... This is after Bill got back with SCW, and then Bill and I just decided once KB retired that we were going to become a tag team. Um, there's a far more... The, the getting into the cop gimmick is a totally different story, so if Bill wants to throw anything into this story, let him. Cause I'm, right now I'm cutting up tacos. First time I think we did it. I think it was actually me and Scampy, right? Yeah, it was you and Scampy and Beyond Wrestling. Yeah, Again, we wrestled Sugar Dunkerton and uh, Taka... Taka Suzuki. Yes, there it is. It's Japanese. <laughs> and um, we just went out there, had fun, a big comedy match, and like it blew up on the internet. And I think that's how it started. Um, and we, I think we, we teamed a little while in FTW again, but it was more me and Scampi than me and Dan. And then once Scampy retired, me and Dan just teamed up by ourselves. No real gimmick or anything. Just going out there and wrestling. Um, yeah, we, I, and we, I remember we had, we had said that uh, we were tired of being... We, we wanted to have fun. And so me and him decided to team up just because we wanted to enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, so then... ISW came around, and they're known for their very outlandish and wacky gimmicks. So, I think Dan came to me at the time and was like, "Hey, I have this idea. We should be, we should have like like a like a 1980s buddy cop tag team. Like, I'll dress like Tom Selleck from Magnum PI, and you dress like Danny Glover from." Uh, lethal weapon. So, and we thought like, that Bill like, is a dead ringer for Danny Glover. <laughs> yes, absolutely, completely. Yeah, like <laughs> spot on to a T. I think. Yeah, I, I, people I, like to think you are Danny Glover. You get that a lot. Well, I, I do get that a lot. Wait, like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're you're not Danny Glover. No, I am. I am oh. Danny Glover. Okay, because I was going to say this interview is over if you're not. No, no, yeah, no, I am. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's weird, like, having this disguise on and everything, because you can see right through it, especially, like, when I, when I left my apartment today, I was getting into my car, and some guy was, like, getting into weird work and stuff, and, he, and like, he followed me all the way to Kohl's, so I was picking up some clothes, some, uh, some Keurig uh, appliances today. And he followed me into Coles, and he was like, hey, I need to ask you a question. Do you really look like Danny Glover except white? And I almost lost my mind. I wanted to kill this fucking kid. Like, how... What the hell are you doing? What is... What the hell is going on? Those are some tacos going on, huh? Jesus Christ, Dan. Come on. Uh, I'm making you black and holy, guys. I'm making you black and holy. Jesus. So do it, like, go... Go into the room. 
I can't hear myself think. Now I don't even know what I'm talking about. I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought because Dan's making guacamole. On to the next <laughs> subject. Okay. Well, I'm going to say that since forming the tag team, you guys have become mainstays at like a ton of different promotions in the Northeast. You're currently working for Beyond Wrestling. You mentioned ISW or Interspecies Wrestling and even Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. Are you guys both happy with your current runs in profession or independent wrestling? Um, I think... I, I would say we're we're happy, but not as happy as we could be. I know we want to go a lot more places. Um, PWG out in the West Coast would be a pretty good gig, I think. I, I, you know what? I think we just want to get more exposure all over the country and get booked wherever we possibly can right now so more people know about us. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, yeah, you agree. Anybody becomes com- yeah, anybody becomes like complacent about where they are, like, oh, not as good. Is like you should reassess what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, not not that there's anything wrong with it, but like, you know, you should if you're not continually motivated, then you need to kind of readdress what you're actually doing and why you're doing it. And for us, like, legitimately, the cop gimmick, the fun thing with the cop gimmick is we legitimately were only going to do it for one company. We were like just going to do ISW as this cop thing. And uh, we were having fun with it. We're like, oh, whatever, we'll have a good time. It'll be simple, it'll be fun. And then we, the re- ovation we got from that show, we're like, we should probably do this a little more. And so then we took it to, like, Beyond Wrestling, and Beyond Wrestling was like, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, they wanted to put us on all their shows. But originally, they actually weren't going to put us on their shows, fun fact. They were, we were just uh, only on the uh, show prior to their debut at Set Music. And then they decided to put us on all the shows after that show. Um, and then from there we went to, uh, you know, pe- people started telling people about the, the gimmick and like, this is, this is so much fun. You guys should, why you should all use it. You should all use it. And then, uh, you know, uh, we went to a company called CTWE, which now closed. And we went to, um, now we're in combat zone, which a lot of people really wouldn't expect this silliness to be inside. You know what I mean? Like nobody really thinks a, a, a silly cop gimmick is going to be re- competing for tag titles in the next CCW event, cheap plug. Um, and then whatever you see, we went back into, and then, uh, House of Hardcore, Tommy Dreamer, uh, offered us a spot, and now we're on there, and, you know, the next show, like, you know, it's, it's been fun, like, it's crazy how, like, all this is sort of, like, steamrolling into, like, or, like, snowballing into this big thing. Um, we didn't expect it, but, like, we're not done. Like, we want to, we have more we want to do. All right. We're now, just getting started. <laughs> just, just the beginning. Just getting started. <laughs> now, guys, uh, you've lent your hands to train again, also, helping out at, uh, the House of Hardcore School, is that just as gratifying to you guys as wrestling, helping out uh, younger guys? Uh, absolutely. I think that, um, especially there, because along, I mean, we, we go, like, go sporadically, I guess, but um, the head trainers there are Victor Lish and Hale Collins, the now, which are Poughkeepsie locals. Um, and they have been around just as much as we have. They've been all over the place. Um, so all four of our minds, like, combined, I think, is really, really, like, informative for these kids, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I've, I've been somewhere. Uh, Dan hasn't. Dan's been somewhere I haven't. Vic's been somewhere we haven't. You know, all that, you know? Mm-hmm. So everybody, there's, everybody's had experience all over the place, and we can all combine that together and share it with the, the kids at the House of Hardcore School. And I think from what I've seen, they are doing a hell of a job. And I, I actually think a few of them are going to be on this ISW show coming up as like a, kind of like a, like a, like a tryout show, I think, beforehand they're doing. Um yeah, and the, they're also they're also getting some some uh, notoriety on the House of Hardcore shows as well, which is really good. So they're really uh, getting the exposure that they deserve right now. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. plus with, with Tommy Dreamer, who's the only person in the wrestling business who can show up on Raw Monday, <laughs> the Impact on Thursday, and then in front of twenty people at any show on Saturday. You know, and yeah. still be loved by everybody in the business. He is the best person to have a connection with because he can get you booked wherever you want, whenever you want. 
And as, as you can see from this past Friday, there was some of the Rose Buds <laughs> at a Rose thing. A few of them were House of Hardcore students, including Vic Delicious himself, who did a hell of a job and took a hell of a buff from the Demon Cane. <laughs> they were gorgeous. Now, Dan, uh, are you are you eating tacos, or are you okay to... I am sitting down. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm here for the phone calls. If I have, you know, you guys got to realize i got to double up my time here. So right now I'm, I'm tuning some, uh, some taco meat into my delicious uh, tortilla. But go ahead. Okay. So when you aren't investigating, we know that you spend time being a comedian, even hosting mm-hmm. shows for Mick Foley. Um, mm-hmm. In your experience, which is harder, wrestling or telling jokes? Well, it depends on what you're looking at. You know, like, for me right now, uh, comedy is significantly harder because I've been doing wrestling for so long. Uh, but it's just a, it's a different muscle. You know what I mean? Like, I, um, the way I always put it is, like, I've wrestled at Rikers Island. Like, I've wrestled at a prison. Um, I remember going in, they gave me the speech, like, hey, like, if they take you or hold you hostage or whatever, like, that's it. When I'm negotiating, like, you just have to, you know, wait it out or whatever happens, happens. And being like, okay, like, whatever. Like, that's why, you know, I'm cool with that. And then I remember going to, I did a fundraiser for, like, 70-year-old women. And I was, like, freaking out. Like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was uncomfortable with the idea of performing in front of 70-year-old women, but I was okay wrestling in front of inmates. Um... It's just a different, it's a different muscle, you know. I'm hoping that after, like, if I were to spend the exact same amount of time in comedy that I did in pro wrestling, I would have, you know, the same level of comfort. But, you know, right now, I get scared shitless if uh, I'm told, the hell can you go up right now? Or as opposed to wrestling, if me and Bill showed up at a show and, like, can you get dressed and go out right away? We'd be like, yeah, whatever. No problem, <laughs> bud. All right. Now, now, guys, uh, why we're here, th- th- we're talking about interspecies wrestling. Now, on uh, October 25th, you guys will be wrestling. Uh, you'll be challenging the Food Fighters for their interspecies wrestling tag team championships. Now, guys, what strategy do you have for Pasquale and Bastion Snow? Hmm. I mean, well, I'm going to eat a taco. <laughs> We're, we're probably going to eat a lot of tacos. And they... It's a, it's a lobster and a crab. I'm a big fan of seafood. So I uh, plan on bringing a big pot of boiling water so I can kill the both of them and eat them right afterwards. Don't forget the They're lobster really bibs, right? Lobster bibs might come in handy. Oh, those are for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I eat lobster yeah. and crabs whole... Shells on, sometimes raw. Sometimes I'll go into the river, in the Hudson River myself, no scuba equipment or anything, and just scale the bottom of the river, finding lobsters and crabs, which I didn't know were in the Hudson River to begin with. But I find them, and I eat them right then and there. <laughs> and they're delicious. Nothing's, nothing's crazier than seeing Bill naked hunting in the Hudson River with a <laughs> bottle of Frank's Red Hot eating raw crabs. Yeah. It's both scary and arousing. So expect me to be completely naked at this ISW show with Frank's Red Hot smeared all over my face. They killed Ken Scampi. They murdered Ken Scampi in the middle of a wrestling ring. Oh, well, yeah, that is right. He didn't retire. He's dead. What's that? forgot about that. I said, yeah, he didn't retire. He's actually dead. He was murdered. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. They killed Ken Scampi in the middle of a wrestling ring. And then Pasquale, if you read his Twitter at Pasquale ISW, he is saying he's going to make the, the streets run red with our blood. He is Did he say that? I, oh, he said that. Oh, he said it. Look it up. I retweeted it. Never Shit. Yeah, so he's real. Bitch. So I'm going to literally, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to unload my gun, my literal nine millimeter into his asshole. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to shoot a gun directly into his butthole. Now, if that doesn't right. sound... Tell, if that right there doesn't sell tickets for the show, I mean, what more could you ask from these guys, right? Yeah, Jonathan? you guys want to see me? If you guys want to see me execute a chef in the middle of a wrestling ring while while a crab cries in the corner and Bill <laughs> nakedly chases it with a bottle of Frank's Red Hot, if yeah. that doesn't sell wrestling tickets, uh, you might not have a soul for your comedy. <laughs> you know, look, these, 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 the audience has the opportunity to witness. Two actual live killings 
right in front <laughs> yeah. of their eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who doesn't want to see murder? Well, hey. And be- because it's wrestling and because we're cops, it's fine. We'll get away with it and that's free. round. Dan, um, what is the best buddy cop duo of all time? Well, that would be Axel Foley and Nick Nolte. Okay, okay. I will, think about it. Think about it. There are three Beverly Hills. Little, at another 48 hours, the phenomenal movie. I think we can all agree on that. Bill, you are one of wrestling's big men. Who is your favorite big man? My favorite big man. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm going to go with Bruiser Brody. Uh, I, like, I hope all these questions are like, hey, Bill, you went to the WWE. Tell me about this. And then me, you come back to me and be like, Hey, Dad, you wrestled in a VFW hall once with 150 people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask other questions to go. I want, that's how I want these questions to go from now on. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you, um, Dan, in your team, I, and this, maybe this will get lost, I don't know, but uh, who is the Rizzoli and who is the Isles? Whoa, 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 whoa. First off, don't try and split this up like that. Okay, we are not just we're not limited to Rizzoli and Isles. They show that I'm almost positive has already been canceled. We are far better than that. Like if anything, how do I how do I who do I, who do I think that we are? I would say that we're closer to like Vincent D'Onofrio and uh, what's that girl's name? Um, shit, how did I lose this? Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I like, visit Nanaprio, and he's ice deep. And that's how that works. <laughs> All right, guys, both of you, what is your dream tag team opponents? Who are they? Bill? Demolition. Oh, not on my watch, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, and, um, Dan and, Bill, and, and Bill Eady have uh, a heated uh, rivalry going on. Yeah, we, very, are, we, have very upsetting. we have legitimate heat, um, Bill, Edie, and I. Uh, so the less we talk about him, the better. But he knows what he did. And Bill, I'm coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I so, Dan, Jim who, 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 who would you be? Who, oh, Jim and I. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely the, not a one of mine. The Jim and I, 100%. I saw, I did see, a, I think, either a tweet or a Facebook that you were, you were coming for him. Mm-hmm. He knows okay. exactly. They, both the Jim and I and Bill E know what they've done, and they know that we're coming for them. Okay. Um, we, well, we look forward to that as well. Um, but Dan, who are some of your comedy role models? Oh boy! I mean, first off, you got you to look at like. Well, let's just start from the top. We'll start with Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is probably the best storyteller comic ever. Uh, the guy can sit on a chair and just look into a crowd and hear fully uh, engulfed in what he's talking about. I think a guy like uh, like Bill Burr is a very good comic, very funny comic, a uh, very fucked up comic, and can pretty much says whatever comes to his head, and you pretty much have to laugh at it. It's all in how he delivers it. Um, you have Louis C.K., who I think is very, very funny. You have, um, I mean... Carlos Mencia. Yeah, Car- obviously <laughs> Carlos Mencia. Um... Hmm, let's think. Uh, Tom Hanks in that movie where he does stand up, phenomenal, great comic in that. Uh, with Ford Gump. Ryan, what's that? Forrest Gump, right? Yeah, <laughs> for, in Forrest Gump. Uh, he, <laughs> that movie is hilarious. He was very funny in Forrest Gump. I don't know. Um, um, I think, you know, as much as I don't like him, Bill Eadie's a great comic. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this, yeah, is getting, this is getting to the point of semi medium lightning round. Yeah, yeah. This is I, I like I like long answers. You just happen to like lightning. At some point, you're gonna have to like stop the lightning because you're tired of hitting the butt. All right, all right. Uh, now, both you guys, do you have any facial hair grooming tips? Yeah, be a man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he he has he has a very nice mustache, and I haven't shaved in years. My whole body. You can see my back. My back is like a it's like a full, full on sweater. If you yeah, if you were to not if Bill was not to shave anything from now until Christmas, 
his only thing that would be showing is maybe his forehead. <laughs> That'd be it. His forehead and his eyeballs. And sometimes I get hair. I find random hairs on my forehead. I don't know where they come from or how they get there, but I find them. I blame Bill fucking Eadie. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. I I um. I, I don't know what else we can go into here, but I want to... So, what about my grooming tips on your mustache? So, when you're growing a mustache, you have to cultivate it. You have to talk to it. You have to treat it well. You have to shampoo it, condition it. That's the, that's the first. A lot of people don't think about conditioning and shampooing your facial hair. A lot um, of mint yeah. tree oil, too. Oh, what's that? A lot of mint tree oil, too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and if you, can, if you can rub some aloe vera on it every now and then. Uh, for some reason, it stimulates hair growth. Um, two, make sure you trim your mustache depending on where you want it. Like, I happen to not, I don't look good with the, the whole coating tag. Most people don't, so don't try and do it. You know, cut it at the lip, make the bottom of your line. That's all you have to do. And then uh, make sure you comb it. Comb your mustache. That's a big one. A lot of people overlook that. And make sure you comb, condition, shampoo, aloe vera. You know mint tree saying? oil. Mint tree oil. Ragu from time to time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously ragu. Uh, Frank's red hot as well. Mm. And then um, and then that should do it. That should be your facial hair. Lightning, Lightning round. round. I think, <laughs> I think that um, instead of the hustle, loyalty, respect, the next uh, Team Tremendous shirt should say comb, condition, and mint tree oil. <laughs> not a bad idea <laughs> um so now that we've uh, got done with the lightning round uh where can fans keep up with you guys i know that some of you have facebook twitter instagram um i imagine there's a merch store and upcoming shows so whoever wants to take this have at it so you can do it now listen to eat this taco uh, all right well you can you can find me on twitter at WWE Dutch mm. and also on Instagram at WWE Dutch. I refuse to I change my name because it, because, because it gets me more followers. <laughs> and also, I, I still haven't gotten over my release, so. Um, <laughs> which I was talking so good. <laughs> um, we, have, we do have a merchandise store. I don't know mm-hmm. the website. Dan probably does because he knows a lot more than I do. Um, MKT.com. MKT.com slash Team Tremendous. Oh, uh, yeah, what he said. Um, we have T-shirts on sale, 8 by 10s on sale, and you can also order a drunk phone call from myself for five bucks. <laughs> five bucks, and you can get Bill Carr hammered calling your home. But yeah, because nine times out of ten, I'm going to be shit-faced anyway. Any time throughout the day. Right now, I'm okay because I just woke up. I haven't been able to uh, have my, my alcohol yet. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're pretty... You're going you're gonna to guarantee me being drunk if you order that phone call off from me. Yeah. Um, Bill wakes up every yeah. morning, brushes his teeth, and then drinks a bottle of mouthwash. Yeah. Within seconds. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm destroyed by noon. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, I mean, noon tomorrow. And like we mentioned, October 25th, Interspecies Wrestling, it's Slam Tasia 5. Uh, it's the fans bring the Legos. You guys will be there. Um, you're going to be at House of Hardcore in Philadelphia on November the 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, are you? Do you guys have any Beyond Wrestling shows coming up? Um, we do, but I'm, I'm pointing out that you, you once again... Only listen to Bill do his plugs and then totally glaze over me. Well, like, you don't want to hear Dan Barry talk about Twitter. <laughs> I'm no, at the Dan Barry. You don't want to say Facebook.com slash the Dan Barry, Instagram at the Dan Barry. None of this. No, you only want to hear about Bill who's a illustrious WWE <laughs> career. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. No, I, I was getting. I was getting to that because now I know that Dan Barry actually has some comedy shows that he's doing and there are some, uh, some more upcoming comedy shows. So I wanted to hear from you on those. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if you guys knew, but I was, I was signed by the WWE. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, you, you are only seconds away from being on the Bill Eadie list. 
Just reminding you guys again, I was <laughs> once signed to the WWE. Just letting you know. I don't know. I don't know if you guys knew it all. That should be another shirt, by the way. <laughs> I, I was once signed to WWE, <laughs> <laughs> and then my mine will be never quite made it. <laughs> <laughs> not not only did we find out a lot about you guys, but we're also, you know, hashtagging or, you know, copywriting shirts as we go. I mean, don't forget these because when they come out, we're going to have to buy them. Oh, yeah, oh, you absolutely know. will have to buy them because we need to use it to support our 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 living. Cause we, don't have a, we, don't, we don't even make money from being cops anymore. Bill's been suspended so many times from doing desktops. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I eat a lot of lasagna, too, so that's where a lot of the money goes. <laughs> Wow, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, that's that's the time coming to a close, guys. We we, oh, we didn't even get to plug my upcoming shows. You really got you guys are fucking killing me right now. I think I got distracted by the tacos. Like, Go ahead, plug oh, it. Up. No, I'm the one making and eating tacos, and you guys aren't on the ball. You bill eating motherfuckers. I cannot believe this. What Unbelievable. What? You know what? I'm taking over the show. I'm taking over the show. Hey, guys. I'm here with uh, my partner, Bill Carr. On the Who was once signed by the podcast. WWE. <laughs> once signed by the WWE. I am never quite made it, Dan Barry. Um, <laughs> November 1st, that will be CZW in Deer Park, New York. The November 8th will be at CZW in Voorhees, New Jersey. The November 15th will be at House of Hardcore in Philadelphia, the ECW Arena. And then the 21st, I think... We will be at XWA in Rhode Island. The 22nd will be at FTW in Queens. And then the following weekend is Beyond Wrestling's Tournament for Tomorrow 3, where me, Bill and I will be competing in the Tournament for Tomorrow. Wow. That's the end of my <laughs> motherfucking plug, you <laughs> Bill E.D. pieces of shit. <laughs> well, thanks for reminding me of those bookings, Dan, because I had no idea. <laughs> Bill was writing them down as I was saying them. <laughs> Is there anything else, uh, Dan, that you'd like to throw out there? Yes, there's one thing that I want to throw out there. I would just like to remind everybody out there that I was once signed to the WWE. <laughs> And that I never quite made it. And Dan was never there. Um, Not even an extra, ever. He was never an extra. How shitty is that? That sucks. So I'm I'm going to give you one more, (laughs) another t-shirt idea here. I say that you, Dan, you'll have to have a shirt that says, signed, was once signed by the WWE with an arrow pointing to Bill. Yeah. (laughs) My partner was famous once. Wow. Eh, I wouldn't go that far. No, 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 Could no, no. Caitlin and AJ posted or talked about you on uh, TV one. That is true. That is true. And up until this last Friday, I think I was the last person who uh, was dragging Teddy Long out of the general manager's office, never to be seen ever again. I <laughs> killed him. I murdered him. I <laughs> ate his eyes and I sucked his ears. What does that mean? That is weird. On to the next subject. That <laughs> <laughs> we we ran out of subject, guys. That was <laughs> that was that was pretty much the show. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, before you, guys... I really want to be. I really want to be the C in the human centipede. The C. I really. I I have a lifelong dream that one day I will be the C. I want you to know that we just spoke with none other than Tiny Zeus Lister, and he is going to be in Human Centipede 3. Oh, my God. I can't wait to be the C behind his B. <laughs> that is, uh, there you go. <laughs> wow. Team Tremendous. Talk about interview Tremendous. That was one hell of an interview. Uh, you never know what you're going to hear on another wrestling podcast, but uh, Bill Carr, Dan Barry, thanks so much for joining us. We hope to have you guys on future shows because where else can you make tacos, do a podcast and talk about facial hair all in one place, Jonathan? Yeah, I think that we've really outdone ourselves and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is our best show yet. Hey, there you go. Now... I promised you that you would be talking to my crotch tonight. Come on, J- Jonathan, come on, please. We uh, we barely know each other after 20 episodes, and I'm talking to who? Mike Roch. Mike, that's right, I forgot about that. Mike Roch, owner of Interspecies Wrestling, right? Yeah. Well, what did he have to say? Let's find out. 
have none other than the creator, the promoter, the all-around everything for Interspecies Wrestling, Mike Roch. Mike, thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you guys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm super, super pumped about this. Uh, I want to do anything and everything I can to get Interspecies Wrestling out to the masses. Um, it just super shows. They're totally unexpected. In one way, I want everybody to be there, but in another way, like the the intimate crowd that we have at the Heirloom Arts Theater is just uh, second to none. So um, I want to just, for for everyone that's out there listening who may not know about it, can you just tell us a little bit about interspecies wrestling and maybe how you got it started? As a way to describe interspecies wrestling, one of my partners, Matt Hack, he, he put together this description that he's been using everywhere he goes, every podcast he's been on. And it's 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 basically perfect. It's uh, basically what he said is uh, all the wrestling promotions that you enjoy, all right? They all went to this prom, okay? And the prom queen got knocked up by one of them or all of them. <laughs> She had a baby. Uh, baby ended up in a dumpster. Found by wolves. Was raised by wolves, and that's what interspecies wrestling is. <laughs> that is absolutely perfect. I just described it on another podcast I was on. Not another wrestling podcast, but another <laughs> podcast. Uh, I described it as basically two monkeys with knives. Uh, one of them represents traditional pro wrestling. One of them represents everything that's wrong with the world, <laughs> and they're just fighting. <laughs> But uh, yeah, interspecies wrestling was a, it started as a joke. It's basically a joke that's gone way too far uh, between a bunch of friends in uh, in Montreal, Canada. Now, uh, you, you guys, uh, you, you've had a pretty good year. I mean, you ran several events, uh, even having events at Vans Warp Tour. Uh, do you guys plan on coming back next year, or any other maybe concerts or anything like that? You plan on, plan on expanding to? Because uh, that that oh, would be pretty good. We would love to do more concerts and conventions and whatnot. So, so if anybody out there who represents like a concert or a comic book convention or anything is listening and you'd like to have some wacky pro wrestling as part of your, uh, your event, we're down. We are down as, as, as down could be. Uh, as for the warp tour, this is actually our fourth time being part of the warp tour. Oh, all right. Uh, but only the first time part of the warp tour in the United States. We'd love to do more. I've even pitched the fact that we'd love to do more dates next year. So maybe something in New York, maybe something in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, screw it. Let's go all the way to California. If we can. <laughs> all right. Now, We'd love to do it again. Um, you guys pretty much run exclusively out of Danbury, Connecticut, and some places in Canada. How do you choose, or how did you choose your venues? Uh, basically, uh, our representative that lives in Danbury, Matt Hack, he chose the Heirloom Arts Theater. Um, <laughs> if I could, uh, if if I don't know if I could uh, tell this story or not, but. He fondly remembers that venue as one where he he got lucky with a young lady when he was a younger person. And he was like, oh, yeah, I know this venue. Uh, I'm going to try and get it. And uh, he went in there, and he had a conversation with them, and he, he scored the Erlem Arts Theater. And we, we fell in love with the place instantly because it looks a lot like one of the venues we ran in Canada. Because in, in Canada, we, we ran basically like punk rock clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this place was a lot like one of them. So it was like, oh, man, we walked in there. And it was just like this feels like home, it, and it almost it's seems home. like he's returning to the scene of the, scene of the crime. Then, if that's exactly the scene of the crime, and we've committed so many more crimes there since. <laughs> yes, you have. Wow, I, w I would definitely love to see you guys in Poughkeepsie, New York, one day because there's a few places up there. There's one called the Chance. It's a small venue, but I think you guys could, you know, to, could could do some damage there. And I think uh, I, I always call Poughkeepsie the the capital of pro wrestling. So hopefully, we'll get you guys. In upstate New York, uh, uh, one day. But um, speaking of the loom, you were saying uh, last year you helped raise money to save the loom, and you were recently involved in helping raising money for cancer. Uh, why do you and uh, your promotion feel so strongly about giving back? Uh, because honestly, it's just something that we've always been into. I uh, the from the first interspecies wrestling show, I wanted to give the proceeds to uh, to cancer because my mom had been affected by cancer back then. But uh, that show ended up not having any proceeds because we lost our asses. But, uh, you know, since then, we've had a little more success and we like to uh, we like to pay it forward, you know, get some of that good karma going. Uh, as for the cancer thing, uh, who who out there hasn't been affected by cancer in some way? You know, cancer is, is an indiscriminate killer. It takes on anybody, any race, any age, you know, any size. doesn't matter. It'll it'll come after anybody. And uh, we, we'd love to do our part to, you know, kick it in the nuts and take it down a notch. 
as for the heirloom, the heirloom's home, man. Uh, as soon as we heard that they were having troubles, we, we had to help them, you know, with because not only because like selfishly we would have been left homeless if they closed, but you know, they're a great place run by great people. Why wouldn't we want to help them, you know? Mm hmm. Now, this is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, you also run a site called ithreatenyourlife.com. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we found it. How how does this site work, and are you some sort of sicko? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, <laughs> some sort of sicko, yeah. Basically, I, I posted a Facebook status one day uh, just saying, uh, if you if you send me $5 via PayPal, I'll write you a love letter. I'm pretty good at writing love letters. I mean, I, I did manage somehow to get somebody to marry me, so <laughs> I must have been good at, at the love thing at one point in my life. And then I, I, I added like a, like a comment basically saying, eh, or if you're, you know, you're fucked up uh, and you want to pay me money, I'll, I'll write you a, like a death threat letter and I'll, I'll draw how I'd kill you. <laughs> and that got more responses than the love letters. So I was like, maybe, maybe I got something here. Maybe this thing can be pretty cool. And it was pretty cool. Um, I've I've drawn a number of death threats for people from like, <laughs> from like England and and Scotland and fucking you know, like all over the United States and Canada. It was really cool. Uh, I'm actually considering shutting the website down uh -oh. because I can't keep up with orders. I'm one person. <laughs> when it, when it came down to to the drawings originally, they were going to be really crude like stick drawings of your death. <laughs> <laughs> but then, some so like somewhere in the midst of making all these drawings, I decided, holy shit, I'm a good artist, and started putting like everything I could into the drawings. So, so every drawing was taking me hours, <laughs> and and I'm not making like 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 basically, uh, you're paying like five dollars for a letter, or five dollars for a drawing, or nine dollars for both. After getting the paper printed, which is on a beautiful heavy stock, and it's it's <laughs> it's really nice looking. Uh, and and like shipping the letters out, I make pretty much chicken scratch. You're gonna have to up the fee or something. Up the fee, or or, or maybe even up the fee to a point where I can hire another person <laughs> to help me out. Uh, the death threats are all ridiculous, though. I mean, there's a disclaimer on the page that tells you they're not real. They're not real, and even if they were real, like how would I even do these? You know, like like I use a lot of pro wrestling in them. I I've done one where I give somebody Kevin Steen's package pile driver on a pile of Lego. Uh, I've done one where I give somebody a giant swing into a industrial fan. Uh, <laughs> I think I saw one, and uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but there was lawn darts and piranha. Lawn darts and piranhas, yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, practice makes perfect. It probably would have taken a lot of time to kill somebody, but they'd get chewed up. They'd, chew, they'd get chewed up pretty well. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, well, getting back into interspecies wrestling, you have some of the most interesting characters going today. How are these characters created? Uh, most people would like to hear me say lots of drugs, but I've actually never done any <laughs> drugs in my life. And I get really, uh, I get really offended when they imply that. Uh, basically, I can find inspiration in anything. Uh, for instance, the character of Lloyd Cthulhuitz, I thought of that while watching the movie Little Shop of Horrors. Huh? Watching Little Shop of Horrors, I don't know, understand how I, I got the idea of combining a divorce attorney and an elder god, but I did, and I drew the picture, and the next thing I knew, the character existed. <laughs> but like, I could find, honestly, I play a lot of video games, I read a lot of comic books, I watch a lot of horror movies, and, and somehow, somewhere in between all of that, I come up with these gimmicks. All right. I'm going to have to say that uh, just as you know, somewhat of a newbie to your, your promotion, I think that the... Probably the front runner for me right now is either Dr. Gene Splicing or Fluffy. Yes, I like those guys as well. Dr. Gene Splicing has the most detailed mask in all of interspecies wrestling, and it's so cool. Uh, I, w I really want to do more with that character. But Fluffy is Fluffy is 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 basically everybody's nightmare. He's he's a big giant killer bunny, and his name is Fluffy. Like I, I think that when things are big and scary. And they have like such an innocent name; it just makes them that much scarier. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Like, like I mean, Chucky the Killer Doll. His name's Chucky. Like, who's gonna be afraid of something named Chucky? <laughs> Until you see, you know, like you know, this this little freaking doll just slashing people up, and you know, we we recently had Tiny Zeus Lister on our show, so he's another. See, Tiny, exactly. Tiny. <laughs> oh man. Um. So you've had. So much interest in your promotion that you're even having an open tryout before your show this Saturday. 
And the best part about it is, is fans can actually come and see the tryouts. So what are you trying to do with these tryouts? Well, we're basically we get a lot of invitations from other promotions to put on showcases in which we, we send a couple of our gimmicks to represent us in a match on one of their shows. And the problem with that is that none of our gimmicks live in the New York or Connecticut regions. Most of them are from Canada, mm-hmm. and there's, there's, there's a few in Pennsylvania and whatnot. And it's hard to get them all out there. So basically with the tryout is I'm trying to see these, these new talents that desperately want to work for interspecies wrestling and send me, send me their resumes all the time and their, their matches on YouTube. Uh, we want to see if we can maybe put gimmicks on some of these guys, you know, to to almost expand our ranks uh, within the states of like 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 New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, so that when it comes down to like a promotion in say Massachusetts uh, wanting four guys for a tag team match, uh, all gimmicks, we could put that together for them without having them without having them have to pay like 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 the gas for a Montreal carload or you know like a Pennsylvania carload. It's it makes it easier if we have more gimmicks around the home base in Danbury. All right. Uh, why do you feel that wrestling fans are tuning uh, more to an alternative product such as yours these days? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that if it wasn't for products like us, all wrestling would just be the same. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of need that, 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 that side dish type thing, the side chick in pro wrestling. And that's what we are. You know, like there's a lot of people that are like, like the, like the straight up wrestling, like the ring of honor, uh, even like the PWG, like, but they can get a little wacky as well. Um, but then they see us and it's like, we like, I describe us honestly to most people as pro wrestling for people who don't like pro wrestling. <laughs> All right. So I, I find it. So like, like maybe like the people who enjoy the straight up wrestling and then come to see us, like maybe it's, they just need a break from that other stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Cause our shows are basically like. It's like it's like a punk rock concert with a side of pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Like you're 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 at this show with a bunch of people and you're having a good time and you're talking to the other people and meeting new friends and whatnot, and then all of a sudden there's a band, and then you look to your right and in between these ropes is a, a giant bunny fighting Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> and cupcakes. <laughs> you know? And cupcakes. We've always got cupcakes. Uh-huh. Cupcakes all- now, what match um, are you looking most forward to this Saturday? We have a Lego death match. We have, like we said, Fluffy will be in action. Um, yep. We have the tag team title match, Food Fighters versus Team Tremendous. What are you looking most forward to? Um, I can't even answer that question. You know, like I look forward to the show as a whole because every match is basically just parts of a whole. Because the way that we lay our shows out is like every match tends to have something different. And when you put all these things together, they, they just make like this one awesome thing. Um, I, but I'd be lying, honestly, if I didn't say I was looking for, forward to the Lego Deathmatch. Because this is something I came up with back in like 2005. And we've been doing it ever since. And uh, we don't do it that often. So it's cool to, uh, to see people's reactions to something like that. Especially if they're a first timer. All right. Uh, what does 2015 hold for interspecies wrestling? Is there anything you're looking forward to next year? Maybe something you can't really say what's going on yet, but you can give us maybe a little, little something. Well, we're planning to make it our biggest year yet. Um, I can't really go into it, but we're, we're, we are looking to expand to other areas. Uh, it is our 10th year in operation. We will celebrate our 10th birthday in August. So that's obviously a big thing for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to make it our biggest year. I can't really say too much yet, uh, but I'll say that I want new characters and I want uh, new places, new places, people, and things. Lightning round. Favorite gimmick of all time. Favorite gimmick of all time. Papa Shango. Where are Glad Bad and the Craigslist Homo registered? Um, uh, I can't even think of anything funny to say. Uh, and I'm up. I don't know. How would you G- glamazon.com? Glamazon.com. Awesome. Um, going back to your I threaten your life.com, how would you kill us here at another wrestling podcast? 
I would staple stakes to your faces and throw you into a pit of hungry dogs. <laughs> Yikes. There you go. Uh, what would your ultimate Lego creation be? Um, I hated the movie Frozen, but lately that Do You Want to Build a Snowman song has been stuck in my head, so I really want to see a Lego snowman. <laughs> okay. Um, and lastly, what would your dream interspecies main event be? Uh, interspecies. Oh, f- my dream main event for interspecies wrestling right now is Masato Tanaka against Chris Dickinson. Wow. Chris Dickinson to me is, is he's like a new Mike Awesome, and with Mike Awesome unfortunately no longer with us, I think that Masato Tanaka himself needs a new Mike Awesome. Even though towards the end he really did not like working him because he hurt him every time. Yes. Lightning <laughs> round. <laughs> Wow. Uh, well, that's. I think that's the end of the lightning round. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, where can fans find you and your product? Any uh, self promotion you want to give out on from social media to the websites? Absolutely. Our official website is innerspeciesrestling dot com. We are also on YouTube at youtube dot com backslash innerspecies. I I myself personally am on Twitter at Rachi Kong. It's like Donkey Kong but with Rachi in front of it. <laughs> And you can follow us as a crew at ISDub. Wow. And there you have it. None other than Mike Roch. Uh, we wish you guys the greatest luck this weekend. Saturday at the Loom, the Heirloom Arts Theater in Danbury, Connecticut. The show starts at 8 p.m. Um, if you want to check these guys out, like I said, get on to get on innerspeciesrestling.com. Um, Mike Roch is on Twitter at Rochi Kong, and you can find them at ISDub also on Twitter. So give these guys a shout and uh, tell them that you want to see interspecies in in your area. What a great show! What a what, thank you for introducing me to interspecies wrestling. Uh, I'm gonna have a blast. Uh, hopefully, I know I'm gonna have a blast because this is something new and crazy, and I just need to go find some Legos right now to bring to the show. I never thought, I've never been so happier in my life to find some Legos to bring to a deathmatch before. It's great. Thanks for joining us, and uh, until next time, it's been... <sighs> Another Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>